Hey everyone, how are y'all doing? Uh, we're really excited to be back with you for another summer, summer of not <laughs> summer, um, summer of GraphQL <laughs> live stream. We should we should rebrand this to the salmon of GraphQL live stream, and then just get a bunch of like salmon GraphQL themed stickers. <laughs> we can do that. Yeah, I don't think anyone wants us to to watch us, uh, you know, hanging out in Adobe Illustrator. Though I think that'll be much less exciting than the two of us uh, writing code. <laughs> I haven't touched Illustrator for ages. I I just can't do it. That that's that's a talent that <laughs> you I can't I don't just have. do it. Fair enough. <laughs> I, I well, so I've taken. We have this really great education budget at Contentful, and I used it last year for design courses because I figure, you know, what's what's the biggest thing that that's lacking in my uh, in my project work? It's that I have no design sense, and I'm always using things like Bulma or Tailwind, and just like really taking advantage of like the built-in kind of like structure to make yeah. things look good. But I just do not have the capacity to like come up with it from scratch. And uh, yeah, I get that. yeah, that that course didn't go well for me. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, better than the comedy course I took the year before. So <laughs> all right. But, uh, but yeah, so hi, everyone. I'm Shai. I'm uh, a developer evangelist here at Contentful, and I'm joined by, by my colleague, Stefan. Uh, we're, we're here to talk to you today about some static site stuff and using static sites with our GraphQL API. Uh, as I always like to do to start off the streams, I want to just kind of plug some of the really cool resources that we have. Uh, if you're just, you know, kind of watching this afterwards on YouTube and you, you want to, like, know where you can learn more or if you're... Uh, tuning in and, and this is the first time you're hearing about Contentful and want to know how to get started, uh, this this segment is for you. Uh, so as always, you can head over to contentful.com slash developers. It's our go-to developer portal. So it's where you can get access to you know, our latest developer posts. You can get quick access to our Slack and our forums where uh, there's a bunch of us around that are happy to answer questions and help provide you support and other community members that you, know, you can hang out with and chat with. Uh, and all sorts of videos and tutorials, uh, including my favorite tutorial, uh, Stefan's GraphQL course. Um, so if you want to learn GraphQL for the first time, if this is your first time using GraphQL or hearing about it, or you just kind of want an opportunity to refresh, we have a really amazing GraphQL course that you can check out. Um, and you can get to that from our developer portal as well. Uh, and it'll run you through everything you need to know about GraphQL. Uh, and it's great. Is there anything else we should plug today, Stefan? Well, I think that does it. Cool. So uh, today we're going to talk about static sites. Um, I have spent a bunch of time last quarter doing a bunch of static site projects and, and working on with Eleven D. Uh, Stefan, what's your experience with with static sites been? Well, I'm all about the jam lately, right? So the yeah. idea behind uh, static sites is that you pre-generate the markup um, and put it then on a static site hoster, like I don't know, like Verso mm -hmm. or uh, Netlify. And yeah. this makes uh, apps usually or websites usually fairly fast because there's no computation yeah. computation going on uh, when a request comes in and there is no real um, server to be hacked because it's all static and pre-generated. Yep. And uh, just a few months ago, I rebuilt my own website using 11T because 11T is kind of a thing these days. And I think it's Good pretty, pretty sweet. So, um, yeah, this is a big U11D site. It pulls in data from Contentful, from GitHub. I like that, from... that fuzzy loading there, that lazy loading. That was really good. It fetches uh, images from Contentful and does SVGs out of them um, during build time. And yeah, yeah I'm, I'm overall pretty happy about it. And 11 yeah. by itself um, gains a little bit of more popularity inside of the Jamstack or web developer ecosystem because it has a super nice data layer and it is fairly quick, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I've gone ahead and I've downloaded an Eleven D starter. Um, if you uh, if you're interested in Eleven D and want to learn more about it, we're going to be hanging out in the Eleven D documentation today, which is just Eleven D dot dev. Uh, we have a bunch of uh, Contentful starters as well. We have some Contentful tutorials up on our our blog, uh, and we have two actual starters that you can clone and you can use to get started. Uh, as well, um, we have a really fun photo gallery as well, and you can, you know, if you want to see all our cats, the cats that are owned by people that work at Contentful, uh, that is the primary point of this photo gallery, uh, and that code is all, 
you know, live up on GitHub and you can check that out. So um, I figured since the I'm the best thing is when you're on 11p.dev is that you have to scroll down and you have to look for, yeah. uh, so on the root page, you have to look. Yeah. So one tab to the left, there should be this yeah. massive, doc yeah. yeah. <laughs> in, in case you're looking for the documentation, <laughs> there it is. So I always have to smile when I see that. That is pretty great. I, I like that it's uh, it's got the the effect as well. It could be bigger though. Like it definitely has more room on the. Uh, yeah, you can you can tweet at Zach Lead and uh, ask for documentation. And he in the past he always made it bigger right, when someone asked for it. <laughs> where's the uh, where's the? <laughs> Just have to make that like fifty or something. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I think we're we're on the limit here, though. <laughs> I I'll have to switch back to take a look at it on my ultra wide when we're done and see what it looks like there. Um, so yeah, I went ahead and just pulled one of the starter projects. I love that they have a lighthouse testing, lighthouse testing on all of the starter projects. This makes me want to go back and fix up the stars that I made because I feel I feel a little. Uh, a little uh like i got a little bit of work to do compared to some of the other scores on this uh on this page but uh we went ahead and Stefan and i were taking a look at this earlier and we figured rather than starting from scratch we would just go ahead and clone uh an existing kind of uh uh site uh, we found this one that's really nice and we have it up and running um as well um and this is also on github and uh, angie if you could throw this in the comments uh as well that would be really exciting um just so folks can uh, can find it on their own. Um, but yeah, we went ahead and downloaded the site. Uh, we did this off screen. We did an npm install. We've got it. We've got it running. Um, and this site is actually really nice. I I really the design and aesthetic of it. Um, it's got that kind of like whole card thing, which I'm I'm really into kind of cards. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> what we were doing with the superhero blog a couple of weeks ago. Shadows uh, came back kind of, recently. Yeah. Yeah. Did they go away? <laughs> Well, we had this flat area, didn't we? <laughs> I think I might have missed buttons. that. <laughs> um, oh, we got a we got a great question in the chat from Amelia. Uh, Stefan, hello, very excited to be here. I have a question. How would 11D compare to Gatsby? Well, 11D is a little bit more bare bones. So when you think about Gatsby, Gatsby is also static. It generates HTML up front, so it's also fairly fast. Um, but uh, Gatsby apps are usually universal JavaScript apps, which means that you load it initially and then React takes over. And from then on, it's a React application. 11T is a little bit more bare bones. So it's very flexible in what you can do, um, but it has HTML as its core and you don't have to ship um, much or JavaScript at all um, if you don't want to. So for example, when you go back to the to the leaderboard that you just had, nope. had open yeah. a, a moment ago, this is what the 11D community is very proud of. Um, it's the this step. Yeah, so usually 11D sites are based on really just a little bit of a CSS and HTML, and this makes them very, very fast. Um, you see there are a lot of 100 performance scores, uh, and this is why, this is because 11D comes not with this whole JavaScript ecosystem that we have usually these days. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've always been impressed at both how fast 11D has been and how simple it's been to use. It took me, it took me a little bit to get my head wrapped around kind of how 11D was handling and moving the data internally, but once it clicked, it kind of just made made sense for me, and it seems very, very simple. And so I'm a big, I'm a big fan of 11D. I think it's if you uh, put a gun to my head and ask me to pick my favorite static site generator right now, I think I think this is the one I would pick. Um, yeah, I agree. I mean, th that's why I also rebuild it, right? I had, uh, yeah. I'm just uh, preparing a talk which covers 11T a little bit, and uh, yeah. I, I reduced the overall page uh, page weight by 65% or something, and everything mm -hmm. just becomes a little bit snappy and faster because very yeah. often things are a little bit over engineered, I would say mm -hmm. these days. Yeah, I remember this talk. I think one of the first talks I saw you give was about. Uh, Pay or page accessibility in uh, areas that don't necessarily have the best internet connections. And I think if you're serving kind of an under internet utilized market, whether that's like rural America or like third world, like Africa or something where everyone is doing things on cell phones, that those lighthouse scores being being really fast and, and light, uh, I think can make a huge difference. 
Um, yeah, HTML well. is robust, right? HTML yeah. usually works, um, whereas when you ship a lot of JavaScript, it becomes a little bit more complicated and complex. Yeah, it gets heavier, especially with, with um, yeah, so should we dig into, into this code base? Let's get the starter and bring Contentful in. Cool. So uh, I was peeking at this uh, a little bit off screen. And uh, I think the, the exciting things that we can take a look at are the data layer, which kind of processes the posts and put them in, and then the posts themselves, which are kind of just straight marked down uh, as well. Uh, and so I think if we were to make a content model uh, that would take in this data, it would probably be um, title, date, image, and then maybe a rich text or a markdown layer. Uh, we can just yeah, use markdown since this is already in markdown. Um, yeah, I think that makes sense. But uh, maybe you want to start with the author to, to start small. Yeah. So we have, a, yeah, we have we this data layer, um, which is an underscore data. And the mm -hmm. cool thing about 11T is that it has this idea of a data directory or something. Mm -hmm. So when you go, for example, into the 11T config, there's probably mm -hmm. defined um, Right here? Uh, the data layer. Can you scroll to the bottom here? Um, so it says that the input directory is source, and then it's defaulting to underscore data. And the cool thing yep. about this is that you can throw in JSON files there or a JavaScript files. And whatever mm -hmm. these functions and then will return uh, will be available in 11 And this mm -hmm. can also be promise-based functions. And, and I think that we could just start by um, bringing in a, a contentful JavaScript file and then uh, build up the outer author first. What do you think? Yeah, let's, I think that's a great idea. Um, should we get started by uh, getting the content model for the author setup? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Cool. So let me go ahead and is it readable if I do a split screen like this? Or no, it's not super readable. Let me do that. Cool. So we went ahead and we spin, spun up a new space uh, off stream. And so let's start by building a new content model. Yeah, we can let's call this content author. model author. And then we can add a field for each of these. Exactly. So tag. And the home page, which should be page. URL. Yep. So it's going to be. Yeah, then we have bio. Bio, which looks like is also going to be a short text. Yeah, I think it does a trick. Avatar. Now, do we want to host this image, or I think we should host the image ourselves? Yep. All right, let's do that then. We can make the validation image, and the appearance should be fine. And then. Email. I love that this, this is already stuff. this is already here. I always forget the regex. I'm I'm so bad at regex. I'm I'm I wish I was one of those folks that could just uh, have it memorized, but I have to Google it every every time. Everybody is bad at regex. That's how it is. Oh, I have some I have some friends that are amazing at it. Um, and I, I am not one of them, unfortunately. All right, so let's go ahead. We can go ahead and push this back to full screen and then save it. Let's go ahead and make an author. So. Be yourself. I don't know. I don't want to steal credit from uh, from Mr. Hawk. Uh, he put in a lot of oh, work on enough. this bio. Yeah, so, fair enough. Uh, he did. He did all the work. We're just uh, we're just giving him a, a small assist here with uh, with the contentful add on. Yeah, and here you can. Oop, did I? Let me just. Huh. 
my ad block is not on. I don't know what's going on with uh, with the photo selector there. <laughs> That's a little rough. Uh, I'll figure that out in a second though. <laughs> um, and five, five, five. Five, 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 five. Oop. Do we need the plus one? Does not. <laughs> We're so proud of the validation, Jack. <laughs> I just have to figure out how it's set up. It might be the. All right, give me a sec. I'm going to go turn the validation off. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure how the validation was set up, and I think that might be might be messing with me. Let's have a look. It's oof digit was, minus. Yep, I it doesn't want the country code. It's one dash. There it is. Here we go. And then let's see if we can fix this image. There we go. Mm. Gotcha. Okay. No idea why that wasn't working. I bet that's probably my computer. Great. <laughs> Great. Okay. <laughs> and we can cool. publish this. Cool. So with this now, we can already create a uh, maybe a contentful function in the in the data layer. Yeah. Should we go ahead and pull this up in graphical first? Makes sense. All right. Graphical. And then let me go ahead and replace these with the new API keys. It's going to be, oh, oh no, unexpected error. It's probably because I don't think that space ID got changed. There we go. Cool. cool. So we're going to need an author. First, you need a query object. Um, yes. um, so in GraphQL, you can define the query, and now we can figure out uh, how to fetch the data. That's the beauty and strength yeah. of GraphQL. So let's just go in there and then. You see the documentation on the right side if you want yep. to dig in there. I usually yep. just go with um, going to the left and pressing control space to get the auto completion uh, running. There we go. And we probably Let's want to author. have a single author. And we want to give it an argument of ID. So ID. And then let's go pull up our author. And we can click over here in the info to get the, in, the, the ID really easily. All right. And then you can, yeah. So <laughs> you open the curly. Yeah. And then let's dig into this. All right. So name. And there we go. Here we, we go. We have an author. So let's go ahead and, and fetch pull them all up. right away so that we have that. Yep. Let's do it. So bio, avatar, and this is going to need a URL then email and phone number. And I think that was cool. all of it, right? Cool. Yeah, that looks good. Mm -hmm. Cool. So let's uh, copy the query. And now we can go into the 11 code base and we can start tweaking things. Yeah. So, so the first thing, ahead. yeah, go. Cool. Oh, I'm just going to save a blank file in the data layer. So author dot. Maybe we want to call it contentful so that we um, do the data fetching all from contentful. Yeah, sounds good. So what you can now do here is um, peek at the process JS first of all to see how the yeah. how the structure is here. Okay, this is not a function. Can you look at site? Also not a function. Okay, we do module exports equals function. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was dot exports. Yep. Equals. Now. This is now a JSON object, right? What we want to do here is though we want to run some Node.js code. So it should be an async function here. 
Yeah, so that's just going to be async up here. Yeah, right? async function and then function parentheses. And here we go. Then cool. So what you could now do here potentially is you could just return an object with some key and then we could check if that is already um, running. Yeah. So just object and then, I don't know, full bar or whatever. Is that? Yeah, that does the trick. So when you now um, refresh 11T, we should see that in the console that it's fetching data. I see the uh, file changed. Yeah, but it's not, uh, it's probably not uh, figured out. You have to restart 11T so that it starts. Um, currently, it's only listening for file changes. Mm -hmm. So let's do that again. And when you have data layer uh, files in there, it should now show um, how long the function run took there, for example. So let's have a look. Yeah, I think it was. Can you, can you bump that up a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. So about 16 seconds. Bum, 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 bum. All right, so let's go into a template and let's do, um, let's see if we have the yeah. data available already. So let's pull up a page. Uh, I guess we could do the index. And so he's using nunjucks here. Yeah, um, so nunjucks, what you can do is you can just uh, go in there into the between line 10 and 11, and you could do two curlies, and then you could do contentful, and then pipe, and then dump. Contentful. But two curlies around it. And then dump. Dump. This is the one that just throws it into the console. Oh, it renders uh, the JSON inside of the. Yep, here we there go. we go. Blue bar. Progress. Nice. So this means that we now have the function uh, available that already can fetch some data now. Mm -hmm. So now we can decide how we want to um, get the data in. So as we're doing plain yeah. GraphQL here, what I usually do in Node is that I use the function um, that is called uh, a, a package that is called got, which is a quick and easy HTML client. Or we use a package that I haven't used before, but that I came across recently, which is called GraphQL request. So um, I don't know if you feel spontaneously or when we want to go with a path that actually. Let's, that uh, let's go with the path it. that we, we, know, uh, we know is going to work because we're already 20 minutes in. And I want to make sure that we. All right. And actually, let's you know go what for this the other. Pretty simple. Let's use let's use the GraphQL package. We've done we've done a lot of these streams, and we've always done it via HTTP. And I guess uh, a good question that I'm curious about. Um, oh, sorry, we're getting a couple questions from the audience as well. Uh, but a good question: um, Why do we have to do long text, long text uh, that we've got from Dcha ninety? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by long text, long text. I'm not sure I follow, but we're happy to answer the question. <laughs> yeah, but uh, well, maybe while Dicha gives us a little more a more granularity into the question, uh, why? What's the difference in your head about using? So we've used window.fetch, which is kind of the standard like HTTP request protocol, versus using a kind of get uh, like a GraphQL library like this. What are the kind of the major like pros and cons there? But I think you're mix, mixing things here a little bit. So in, in 11T, we're only dealing dealing with the server side. So we're not even mm -hmm. using window.fetch. It's a yeah. Node.js code code that makes. Oh, I just kind of mean generally, generally. You know, when you're when you're deciding, since we're we're kind of making that similar decision here, like a HTTP library with got versus like a pure GraphQL request library with with graph request. Yeah, I think on the server side, it really doesn't matter um, because it's yeah. per page here, and we don't have much to do here. So when you mm -hmm. think about uh, client side JavaScript applications, then it does matter a little bit because uh, with GraphQL comes a very nice schema and you could, for example, use a real GraphQL client like Apollo. Mm -hmm. And Apollo does a lot of things under the hood like caching mm -hmm. certain responses, maybe helping out with pagination mm -hmm. um, so that you don't request the same data over and over yeah. again. Uh, here on the in the, in the server side uh, in Node.js land, it really doesn't matter. So we could go with God yeah. or with this one. Um, God is straightforward. It's a little bit more code to write, but I haven't used this one before. So up yeah. to you, Shai. Let's go ahead and use this one because we haven't used a, a library in the stream so far. So uh, Dchat got back to us. They were asking, why do we have to do long text, long text in the stream or in the query? 
Uh, I'm assuming you probably mean either for uh, author and ID. So with Contentful, the author um, is is looking, so it needs the argument of ID to get specifically the author that we're looking for. And then for the avatar, um, since that's an asset, we have some kind of sub uh, things that uh, that we can pass back. So we've got things like the file name, the description, and the URL. And so we're looking to grab the URL specifically in this instance because uh, we want to actually kind of <laughs> pass the image uh, as well. Oh, and when using long text markdown versus short text uh, as well. A lot of questions from DChat today, <laughs> which is great. Keep them coming. Um, yeah, so that's the long text versus short text in the content model uh, is kind of just a how much is being shown on screen. So we've got kind of the shorter um, field and a character limit of 256 characters versus the long text, which is, um, I think it's 50,000 character limit and it'll be the kind of bigger block. Is it 50,000, Stefan, or is I it 5,000? no idea. <laughs> I want to say it's a fifty thousand character limit, uh, but check our check our technical <laughs> technical limit documentation. Uh, don't quote me on that one. <laughs> so, yeah, and in cool. Contentful, we also give different experiences, right? With long text, you will have we'll see um, the Markdown editor, which you can use, and the short text field has different representations, like functionality for a slug, for example, yeah. or um, yeah, or others that that are in there. Yeah, I think the the experience that you provide the editorial is really important. If I if I'm a writer and I see a bio and it's a short text, I'm gonna think like a Twitter style bio, 144 characters or 256 characters or whatever. Versus if it's a big markdown, um, you know, I'm gonna write paragraphs and I'm gonna assume it's kind of uh, you know a bigger thing and it's a bigger deal. So I'm gonna do something a little more intense. Um, but yeah, keep keep com keep them coming with your questions. We we love questions. So okay, so we are going to install. I should have installed this library while we were answering questions. <laughs> I think the snippet is not correct. You have to do npm install, right? Is it npm install? Yeah. Yeah, and in the meantime, we can have a look at the documentation how how it's yeah. going to use because we need some authorizationing happening here. Yeah. Um, bum, bum, bum. Where is something with authorization? Uh, probably this one. That looks good, huh? What do you think? Mm -hmm. I think we can do this one. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So let's go ahead. We can copy paste this. Uh, looks like it's installed, so we're good to go. So let's go ahead and go back to our Contentful function. Yeah, we have to change the import to a require because we're dealing. Yeah. Theoretically, import could work in the recent note versions, but I don't think that we should go that path here. Yeah, so you can do uh, re require. This, this would be const and then the curlies and then require from GraphQL request. It's require. Drop the require there. So it's const curlies equal, yeah. And then equal yes. require GraphQL, GraphQL request. Yeah. Like and this. And parentheses. Parentheses? Yeah, oh, right. Require is a function. Like that. that looks good. Cool. And then we, we uh, could grab the stuff that is from line four to line 20 24 and put it into our function already so that we can drop yep. this main thing. Let's do that. And I'm guessing we probably are going to drop this one as well, because we don't have a yeah. main function yeah. anymore. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's start tweeting it. So the endpoint. Oh. That's going to be the contentful GraphQL one. And yep. we can go ahead and just pull that from here. So we're going to go all the way to right there, right? Yep. And then you have the token in the URL too. Yep. So it should be the bar open. The We're just doing it a little bit proper way here. Tokens in the URL are never nice. And yeah. we have the query already. Yep. So let's go ahead and do that. Do we need the word query at the top? That is optional. 
All right, I will cut it then. Cool. And then let's fire that up. We have a JSON console lock in there. So let's see if we see something in the console when you hit save. Yeah, so save, start my server again. Since I turned it off to install the package. And Captain Automation had what? Headers was not defined. All right. Do we have headers somewhere? It's right here. Uh, where is it pointing to? Maybe that is a client side package. Maybe we should not go for the node way. This is coming from somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Uh, you want to switch over to app. God? Yeah, let's do God. All right. <laughs> we tried. <laughs> oh, we tried. Yeah. Uh, I guess we can leave that. Yeah, and uh, while you can set that up, uh, Captain Automation had a question is like, how can you uh, query multiple levels of linked as existing entries um, in GraphQL, I assume? And well, you go open the GraphQL uh, graphical and then you go down. So want to quickly answer the question, uh, Shai? So what you could yeah. do is yeah. that we could adjust the content model for the author and uh, maybe add a reference field to another author, something like yeah. a fr friend or something. Uh, I could show you with uh, with another content model pretty quickly as well. That way we don't have to like we don't have to modify yeah. fi it. So um, let's do I guess the bread blog. I think we did a link. So we have this bread blog that we did in one of our previous streams that you can check out on YouTube. Um, actually, not this one. What's a better one? Take a look at this. Yeah, let's take a look at this one. So I have a Power Rangers blog that I built uh, ages ago. Um, and there's a show, uh, so show has a title, uh, but it also references characters. So, uh, we can go ahead and take a look at one of these references. So we have Jew Ranger, which is going to have these links to other characters. Uh, and so it kind of like subs into, into that. And then if we pull this up in graphical, so let me just pull these API keys up. So switch out the space token. And then change the authorization. That didn't look like uh, right. The Did I miss? Looks like, yeah, it looks like you have two. Oh. I thought I'd. OK. Let's double check. So let's you have do a it. very long token there now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it looks, like it, it looks like it works. Okay. And then let me just pull this specific piece of content. With uh, quotes for the ID, probably. Oh, it, it seems to work. Yeah. Uh, probably doesn't no, need I, the quotes. No, yeah. Great. So here's our here's our show, and then we can go into character collection since this is a list of references, uh, and then we can do probably be items, and then it'll ask for like name. Yeah. So yeah, this way you could just go down into the reference fields, and you can mm -hmm. decide what you want to have from the references. <laughs> I hope that answers your question, Captain Automation. Yeah. Um, cool. Let's yeah. get back to hopefully got is installed. Oh, yeah. God was really fast, much faster. Uh, great. So let's pull up the documentation for Got. Um, do we want to use the Promise version or the J JSON version? Or uh, we can. I think we can freestyle this. You can uh, just uh, copy the res for the response line there. Yeah, require okay. Got, and then let's get uh, the response thing. Yeah. Cool. So this guy, or yeah, or just the. Uh, I wrote this code many, many times, so I can also tell you. <laughs> you have it memorized. <laughs> yeah. So it would be a const god e equals require god on the top, right? Yeah. Let me just get rid of all this other stuff. Const god. 
And then since we're already in the async, we can get rid of that, right? Yeah, now you um, do a weight rod, then the first parameter is our endpoint. Then yep. you do a comma as a second of, uh, argument. So after endpoint, do a comma. No, nope, uh, inside of the, yeah. And yep. then you pass in an object. So, and this is where our headers are going to go, I'm assuming? Exactly. Then you uh, place a key here, which is headers, which uh, gets another object. <laughs> headers. Uh, yeah. And then you do authorization. And then this is uh, error, and then space, and our. Um, I need to go pull that head. back up. Give me one sec to just go get that token again, because I, <laughs> I deleted it like a chump. <laughs> should I should have held on to that? Oh no, you can move forward, and I can answer uh, uh, answer another question. What do you think? Go about for that? it. Yeah, go uh, for it. Deetra ninety um, ask, what's the biggest learning? curve for, so the biggest learning curve uh, for the data layer between Gatsby and 11 uh, Yeah, so basically this, these are com two completely different ways of handling it, I would say. So Gatsby comes with these um, with these data plugins that make everything work. 11 is a little bit more bare bones. So uh, you place functions or JSON files. It's also very uh, good at optimizing or working with uh, systems on disk. Um, so you have to do a little bit more manual work here. Um, to get the data layer in initially, but uh, there's a lot of flexibility and freedom with this. So for example, how I do it with the sites that I build, I um, just have a lot of um, HTTP calls here and there, and they, the data will be automatically uh, available in, in the templates that I use. So it's a little bit different because Gatsby gets, gets, gives a little bit more um, for the data fetching itself. Um, but yeah, if you're a little bit more the uh, do-it-yourself kind of person, you will uh, really enjoy the data layer in 11D. All right, Stefan, we've still got to send it the query as well. And I didn't want to jump the gun here. But uh, we I'm assuming we're going to throw the query in here as well? Yeah, we, no, we do. Um, so a property next to headers is body. Yep. So comma. Here, this is getting a little. Uh, Difficult yeah, to read. From, uh, from uh, this, yeah. Go on. And then we have body. And this is another object, right? And now you do um, JSON stringify. Uh, capital JSONs. That. And right. yeah, and, and then that's a function and query, right? And it has to be an object uh, with one, just an object just with a key query. Yeah, let's get rid of this one. Yeah, that was a good call. And then you have to, the query in line 24, you have to surround it with curlies. Got it. Like that. Cool. And I think between line 21 and 22, I think we have to define method uh, posts. Post. Uh, is that capital or? A method is uh, just normal low, and uh, post is, I think, post is um, all. all caps. All right. Cool. Uh, let's see it looks still a little bit messy, but let's, let's have a look at something that uh, pops up now. There we go. We Here got, we uh, go. We I love it. Nice. Cool. That doesn't um, look like a string yet, though. So let's have a look where we look. Uh, so it looks like a string right now. So let's uh, have a look at our code again. Yeah. So we probably have, can you do just uh, do JSON parse response body in line 27? So currently yeah. it is. Yeah, let's have a look if the output changes because I'm pretty sure it's a string right now. Was there a lock yep. somewhere? Here we go. Now we have an object. So what we could now do is we could go into our contentful function and we could, so first of all, we I think that we should assign the author. 
So in line uh, 27, let's do um, something like const author equals uh, by the lowercase author. Yeah. And then we do, you copy the JSON parse um, and then we grab uh, the data. Nope, the JSON parse, yeah. And then at the end, you just do dot data because we have this data key um, mm. uh, property in there too. Right, so uh, like there. Yeah, right. so then let's uh, remove the console log. And I think for the simplicity, we can also drop the try catch here. Let's just uh, keep it smooth. And then what we could do is, yeah, let's get rid of this. And uh, yeah, and then what you now can do in line 33, you can um, indent it properly and you can just place the word um, author in there. Yeah, just get rid of the foo bar. Yeah, and you have to wrap it in uh, as an object because potentially, I'm not sure if we make it, but <laughs> we, we would like to uh, probably bring back more th stuff from Contentful here. Yes, that makes sense. Cool, so let's go take a look at the uh, page. Oop. So we're not logging anything anymore, but in the but. index page, we should now pro see that the, uh, that our, yep. here We've we got our author go. Object. Nice. Cool. So where's that so we go ahead? Hmm? <laughs> where's the author display? We should now change some stuff here. So that's in the about page. So let's, oh, that, <laughs> I put it yeah, in the wrong, the wrong uh, document. I shouldn't have put it in the index. I should have put it in the, uh, the about. Yeah. So here we go. We've got our author object and now we can just start uh, subbing this, uh, this in. So like, it's going to be what contentful dot did we yeah, call I think it you can page? I think we have the same keys, right? So you can just replace author with yeah. contentful.author. Yeah, I just caught a mistake that I made. We forgot to uh, we forgot to bring this guy's homepage as well. So let's go right. ahead and just add that back. Um, he's going to find us and he's going to call us out for messing up his uh, website if uh, if we don't include all the uh, the things that he did. <laughs> um, and I think we have a problem in, in our data layer still. Right now we have an object yeah. with author, author. So I think that we should yeah. have in line 28, it should be data.author yeah. at the end. It's like, like that? No, oh. to, no to assign it. Um, <laughs> here we right. go. Yeah. That's what you mean. So with this, we cool. can now do find and replace every author should be contentful.author. Yes, we're going to break the URL though. The avatar is going to mess up, but besides that, everything should work. Yeah, besides everything else, yeah, that should work. So find and replace, and it's going to be multi cursor, love it. Contentful.author, and then avatar is going to be avatar.url. All right, you are ready to refresh this, see if we see how it goes? <laughs> Let's do it. All right, Let's do it. Well, it looks identical. Looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Chai, we nailed it. Can you change something in Contentful? Yeah, we either nailed it or we broke the, uh... oh no, the it, it isn't right, the phone number is wrong. Uh, yeah, the phone number should be, uh, oh, we got a rejected promise. We've seen the data before, so how can that happen? Well, so, so I think it's still caching the old version. So, uh, it's caching the, the new phone number is the five, five, five. Um, I changed it to this. So, uh, so I don't think it's working since we haven't changed the phone number on the page. But we have seen the showing. data already, right? We have seen the request before. We didn't change the actual request to GraphQL. We did not, no. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, maybe 11D is, uh, is not waiting for the promise. Are we doing the async stuff correctly? Huh. I feel like I remember something about... Um, having to force the promise to, to wait before letting the page layer run. But I, uh, I might just be pulling that out of nowhere. Um, 
I think we changed something with the request here. So, so can you do? Um, oh shit! Now we probably need to try catch. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There. Cheat. Just control Z it. Ah, too much control Zing. This is what I want. How's that look? Yeah, let's have a look at uh, what the error response body says. Yeah. Is that rerunning? I don't know if that's rerunning. I got a file change state. Let me just go ahead and restart the server. Do we have any questions while we wait for that to, to go? Which is my favorite power. Important topic here. I don't know. I don't know if that counts, but uh, but I'm uh, I'm a big fan of uh, the uh, so the one the one that's gonna go on air next year. I've already seen the Japanese footage. That one's pretty great. So uh, you know, watch watch Power Rangers live. Um, the next one will be fun. Uh, author is not defined. Did I? And what line is that? Author is not defined in 36. Well, this is the response from the uh, API, so right? It's the GraphQL yeah. API telling that our query is messed up somehow. Oh, no, no, you're right. This is 36. Yeah, this is yeah, doing a return. Yeah. Yeah, let's look at 36. What's going on? So we're doing the author return here. Um, yeah, you should move the Maybe. return now in into the try because const is a uh, block scoped. Yeah. All right, let's have another look. We don't need to do a return null or something there. Well, let's see what happens. All right. Come on. Nope. It looks like it wrote. It wrote a new about file, did it? Yeah, it looks good. I mean let's let's go take a look and see what happens. So, oh, actually, is it serving it yet? It is serving it. Yeah, it worked. There's our new phone number. And I don't want to call it. No FaceTime. <laughs> Can you change uh, yeah, but this is can change the change bio it. just to be very, very sure here. Yeah, absolutely. I can definitely do that. Technology and especially Power Rangers. In the... And then are we going to need to restart the server to rerun the get query? Or? or you hit save inside of your file, which should refetch the data. So file changed. Should it give us a write for, oh, there, there it did. It's rewriting and reloading the browser. And there nice. we go. Interested in technology and especially interested in the summer GraphQL. I like it. Cool. So we have 12 minutes left. What do you think we should do? <laughs> uh, let's take a, another poke around this site. How is he getting this GitHub? Maybe we can, let's take a look at his menu file and see what he's doing in the menu. Um, this is just where he's getting his page structure. Um, well, we could set something up like a site configuration and then have menu items or something. Yeah, yeah, like move that into a, uh, like make a content model for menu. Yeah, so what I usually have is I have a single content entry that is something like a content configuration or something. And then yeah, we or could, like site map or, or something. Yeah, or site configuration, which then has major things like a logo or something. Yeah. And uh, then we could have something like references to menu items, which yeah. then hold the same data. What do you think about that? 
Yeah, let's try. You think we can get that done in 11 minutes? Oh, we have the critical part done already. It's mainly content modeling, yeah. you know. All right, let's do it. Let's do Side it. configuration. Uh, All right, wait. and then we probably need a title. Great. And you menu, men, menu items. Uh, reference for that. Yep, yep. There we go. All right. Save that. That's it. Then we also need a content type for menu item. And uh, what was in the menu, Jason? So there, there was a, a text for the, uh, what was it? Yeah. Label. So label and URL. Label. Yeah. URL. And a Boolean for a new tab. I don't get to use Booleans that often. This is exciting for me. <laughs> All right. Great. Save, Save that it. one, and then let's uh, let, let's rush that through here. Ten minutes to go, Shai. Yeah. Let me just go ahead and validate the reference, um, so we can only accept specific types. Just All right, so we've got GitHub, just yes to a new tab. Oh, no, I uh, I think I made a mistake. Hold on. I can fix this before we get there. I think I need to the turn the URL validation, validation. Off for this Yeah, one. I found yep. that one, too. I was so excited. <laughs> to turn on validations, that, that's what gets you excited. <laughs> And it's uh, did I it did great. And then the last one is gonna be about capital about publish. And then a new site configuration. Oh, single item? Ah, I da -da -da -da. That's on me. I can fix that really quickly. <laughs> Many reference. Cool. Yeah, now we can publish that one. Great. And the beauty is now that we can go to graphical and we can just fetching it because we have it already. Yeah. Uh, do we need to reload graphical? Uh, yeah, I think you have to reload. So I would copy the query and then reload. Uh, oh, this three. Nice. OK, cool. So and then, then use site config. And you need the ID where? again. Uh, where? Let's get into that. And we're going to need items, right? Or Menu items collection. Title. Yeah. And, and this then. is going to be the items. And this is going to be title. All right, so we oh, just text, controls, text. Controls label. Oh, yeah. URL and then new tab. Prettify and play. Oh, what did I mess up? Expected name in line 19. Can you prettify it? It is not letting me. Did I? Title, menu, items, label. Maybe you need a. Maybe it's not label. Let me just go into site config, site config, 
menu items collection, items, label, expected name. But we have a syntax error here. I think it's a, uh, can you try it again now that you put in some spaces and stuff? Mm -hmm. Now it's on 22, so just pushed it further. Um, does it need to be in a, oh, I know what I did. I think I, does this need to be a second query or can it just be in the same? Oh, that's the thing. It's a single query where we can uh, get several things. It's the same query object. Yeah. So when you now do something like this, um, you have to name your queries and you have to define the uh, query that. Uh, so like query. Yeah, but at the end of the referral call, we only will make one query call after yeah. all. So I think we should do take step by step. What if you just okay. take query the site configuration with the ID and the title? Yeah, and get so, rid of the author? No, no, just add it step by step because at some point we have a syntax error here, right? Sure, uh, yeah, we can do that. So it's gonna be. Because here we're still valid, right? Yeah. Yes. Just steal that. Site config. And we'll just do title. Yeah, and fire. Great. So that works. All right. Then we can do menu items. Label. And fire. There we go. Yeah, we had a something was in there, right? Yeah, I'm not sure what that was. URL. And new tab. Great. There this, we go. this looks right. Let's copy that. Four minutes left, Shai. All right. I feel like the more I rush, the worse the uh, the worse the errors get. <laughs> Cool. There we go. So we've got our query, and um, I'm guessing we're also going to want to do a const menu items or something. Site config. Yeah, or site config. Cool. Yeah. Equals JSON dot. Let me just paste this, and then we called it site configuration. Yeah, now you can re return it in 44. Like that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. And with this, we probably we can, can go, go into the menu file. Somewhere is the menu built. It's a JSON file, so it's going to be maybe. Maybe there's a header in Nunjux or something, or a base or a layout. Layouts looks good. Layouts. If this one? Title. I think this is the one. And is there somewhere? Nope. Can you look at the HTML in the browser so that we can find a copy a snippet there and then look over the whole project? Ah, uh, just cheat. Yes. Oh no, our author went away. What happened there? We seem to have lost the. Um... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We seem to have lost our author information. And I am not sure why. Can you lock what we're returning there in the return yeah. statement? Absolutely. We're getting an error now. Expected name, locations. Expected name found comma. I don't think it likes our query. You have two curlies. You have a curly in the line seven. In this one, right? Yep. That's a good catch. There we go. So now this should work again. Go. So, yep. And it live reloads, which is really nice. Great. And, uh, and we were looking at layout. Footer post. It's partials.header, isn't it? Yeah, that makes sense. Partials header. Here we go. 
And here we have, there we go. So it's line nine, it's for item in menu. So what we have to yep. do is now is we have to do dot content full. So change line nine. So it's yep. for item in dot content full dot site configuration. Did I, let's double check. Just copy paste it, save us the. Yeah, and then it's, uh, what was it, menu, menu items or something? I think this actually might just work. No. It's, uh, no, it's not. It's going to be. Can you look at the yeah, response? It was, we have to uh, iterate over the men yeah. yeah, we have to iterate over menu items collection dot items. So is that just going to be another loop inside? No, we, we have to loop over this array here. Yeah, like this. Yeah, like that. And dot items. Yeah, Great. I think that does it. Uh, yeah, let's see if that just works. Well, you have to <laughs> there's always no, item no, now. there's no good way to. Okay, let me save that. You have to save the parent and rewriting. Entry, right? The did I not already save that? No, you saved the the menu item, uh, but not the the parent. The parent should probably now have uh, changed collection in contentful. Oh right, yes, I need to attach that. Good call. Yeah, just publish yeah. here, and that should it. Yeah. All right. Let's see. See if it writes. So we see menu item collection should come in now. Did you have to? Did you hit save um, so that it's uh, retouching the data? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Here we go. We got a write four items. Three. Yeah, let's see. Contentful. We've done it. Nice. I'm pretty happy with this. This is great. This is a lot of fun. This is super, super simple as well. Uh, it was just can you click it? Is it data layer. Tab? It did. Nice. All right. <laughs> Success today, Shai. Yeah, I'm pretty happy. Um, Stefan, where should I go if I want to learn more about Contentful GraphQL uh, or 11D? Where would you recommend before we close out the stream? For Contentful GraphQL, I always would start my journey at contentful.com slash developers. If you're interested in GraphQL in general, um, you will find a video course um, in the video tutorial section there below. Um, this is GraphQL with React and Contentful. Oh. For, for 11 T, uh, Shai, you wrote a tutorial about that, which is on our blog. And apart from that, uh, if you're already on contentful.com slash developers, um, we hang out in our Slack quite a little bit. So if you have questions there, um, feel free to drop in and share what you built. And yeah, if you have any things that we should do on stream in the future, or if you want to dig into something and have questions about anything, um, let us know. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, we'll be back next week with uh, with Ben from Wizards of the Coast, uh, and we'll be talking about some more of our live streams for for the next couple month couple months. Uh, if anyone has any things that they really want to see made uh, or really see done on stream, feel free to drop us a, an email or, or ping us in chat as well. We're more than happy to 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 showcase the things that you've built or, or kind of explore concepts that you're looking to learn more about. Just let us know, and we'd we'd love to either feature you on stream or, or stream about whatever you want us to stream about as well. Uh, but that's pretty much it for me today. I'm I'm really happy with what we got accomplished in an hour. Cool. Yeah. Same here. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we'll see y'all later. Bye, everyone. See ya.